Comparing chars. Let's first understand what a char really is. When you press a keyboard key, an electrical signal known as a scan code is sent to the computer. Scan codes are in bits or binary and is equivalent to a character. The software will translate the scan code into an actual character using the ASCII table. Java uses the Unicode system in storing char variables. Unicode is a universal character encoding standard. It defines the way individual characters are represented in text files, web pages, and other types of documents. Its counterpart, ASCII, uses one byte per character, while Unicode supports up to four bytes per character. So here we have the ASCII conversion chart. I'll put the link on the description. So it's got all the available characters and its equivalent decimal, binary, octal, and hex values. So for example, you press the lowercase a on your keyboard. Your keyboard will then send a signal to your computer, which is in the form of binary digits. These binary digits will then be translated to the actual character inside your software. In Java, we can refer to a character using the character or its decimal equivalent. When we learned the fundamentals of programming, we thought char is a very basic, very plain data type, but it actually is very versatile because it contains two pieces of information, the character and the equivalent numeric value of that character. Here we are in NetBeans. First, let's compare a char value against another char value. I'm gonna do this directly inside a print line statement. Let's say you want to compare the lowercase a with the uppercase a. These values should be inside single quotes. And in between the values, you write your comparison operator. So we're comparing if lowercase a is greater than the uppercase a. If we check our ASCII chart, the lowercase a has a decimal value of 97, while the uppercase a has 65. So if we build and run our program, we're going to get true. Next, let's try to compare a char variable against a char value. Create a char variable. I'm going to call this one C1 and assign a value. Replace this with your variable name. So now we're comparing if C1 that contains the dollar symbol is greater than the uppercase A. Let's check our ASCII chart. Uppercase A is 65 while the dollar symbol is 36. So if we build and run, we're going to get false. Now let's try to compare a char variable and another char variable. I'm going to declare a char variable, call it C2, give it a value. Let's say uh, the ampersand. You simply call the other variable name after the comparison operator. So now we're comparing if C1 is greater than C2. Let's build and run, we're going to get false because the ampersand is 38 while the dollar symbol is 36. I'm gonna improve our output to make it more descriptive. I'm gonna say C1, concatenate this with our symbol, C2, concatenate with colon. So now we're gonna get an error. So this part of our print line is string concatenation, while the end part is a comparison operation. So to fix this error, we simply place our comparison operation inside a pair of parentheses. And if we build and run, it's going to display the characters that we used and the result of the comparison. So now let's try to use the decimal values. So to do this, you just simply type in the decimal value that you want to store on our char variable. So for C1, I'm going to assign a random two-digit number, 55. If we build and run, our output is not going to display the numbers 55, rather the character equivalent of the decimal value 55. So if you take a look at our chart, 55 will be your number 7, not the numeric value 7, but the character 7. So we're expecting 7 to be displayed. Let's do the same thing for C2. Instead of a character, we'll assign a decimal value, let's say 22. 
when we're assigning decimal values on a char variable, we don't need to use the single quotes. So without looking at the chart, let's find out what character is equivalent to the decimal value 22. Let's build and run. And let's say 100. Let's see what character is equivalent to that. It's the lowercase d. So now let's incorporate user inputs. So first I'm going to need to import our scanner class. Next, let's instantiate our scanner class. We'll name our object SC. Constructor method, supply that with system.in, semicolon. For C1, we're going to say SC dot next dot carat method zero. So this means we want to get index zero of our keyboard input. I'm simply going to copy and paste this to C2. So now it's going to allow us to enter keyboard inputs. Asterisk and ampersand. So we get the result. And to make our output more user-friendly, I'm going to add print statements before each input. We're going to say enter first character. I'm going to copy and paste this before the next input and say second. Well, let's build and run. It's going to say enter first character, say zero, uppercase P, and we get the comparison. So let's add the decimal equivalent of each characters to the output so we'll have a better understanding of the result. So I'm going to declare two variables of int type because we're going to use this to store the decimal equivalent of each characters that we input. I'm going to call this one num1 equals parentheses. Inside the parentheses, you put an int. And the char variable that we want to get the decimal equivalent of. So this one will be C1. So this line means we want to store the decimal equivalent of the char variable C1 in num1. I'm going to add this to our output. So this is simply going to add num1 in our output. So let's build and run. First character, let's say question mark, lowercase l. So now we have an idea that the question mark is equivalent to 63 in decimal. Let's do the same thing for the second character. We need an integer to store the decimal equivalent, and this one is for C2. So we're getting the decimal equivalent of the char variable C2, and we are storing that into num2. So I'm simply going to concatenate the same thing. And we're done. So if we build and run, we are going to get a better result. The lower case H is equal to 104. The upper case H is equal to 72, making our comparison true. So now I'm going to simply add the rest of the comparisons. I'm going to copy and paste our print line statement and replace the symbols. Our output will give us all the comparisons. So let's build and run. Let's compare the dollar symbol and uh, the at symbol. So the dollar symbol is equal to 36. The at symbol is 64. It is not greater than, it is less than, and they are not equal. 
So this is it for comparing charts. Thank you, and I'll see you on the next one.